Welcome everybody to episode 10 of Binding of Isaac Explained. I'm Florian Himsel, the original programmer of the game, and today we're going to be talking about worm enemies. Pin and Skolix are such beautiful creatures. Look at them bouncing out of the ground, leaping, each segment beautifully following the next. This is done by storing their position in an array, which is the same I did with Larry Jr. So you might want to watch that episode, episode number 8, about Larry Jr. and Monstro how an array works and how storing the position works. Except for this time we have three positions, because we got X, Y and Z. Now with Larry Jr. we didn't need Y, because he couldn't jump out of the ground, so he was always stuck on the floor. But with Pin, the main selling point is that he can jump out of the ground. Look at that. So whenever he does that, he calculates a point that is towards the player, and then he just shoots upwards. So when he's in air, the physics take full effect. We add the velocity vector to the position vector, and then we add gravity to the velocity vector. Just like a bullet, but now it's a worm and it has segments following it, and it's beautiful. And unlike a bullet, it can bounce off walls. Which is, I guess, fairly simple to do in most cases. I guess I've covered most of this in the physics episode anyways. So I can get right into what makes Pin interesting. Like, for example, what happens to him when he's under the ground? How does he know where to jump out of? Now a lesser game developer would have made it so he just teleports randomly to wherever he wants to appear out of. Yep. Just popping out wherever it's convenient so he can pounce at you perfectly. Well, not this one. I did it so that he's actually invisible under the ground. And if you, if you end up being right on top of him, he can't come out because that would be unfair. So hopefully that's a suspenseful atmosphere. Oh, where is he gonna appear from? How long will it take him? Where is he now? You don't know. You might think, oh, why didn't you make it so that there's like a little particle effect above him where you see where he is? Nope. Since you don't have any way of interacting with him, I didn't want you to interact with him, okay? I didn't want you to stand on top of him and block him from coming out. And I didn't want you to have to avoid him so you, he wouldn't pounce on you. I wanted him to appear out of Nova at random intervals. Or did I? <laughs> Maybe it wasn't the best choice, but it's the choice that I made. And well, I hope it works pretty good, because in Binding of Isaac Rebirth it actually makes a difference. Because in a big room you can actually tell whether or not he would be teleporting, or if he just pops out in the perfect place. So, all this time, Pin or Skolex, they're trying to line up the perfect way to pounce at you, but they might not be able to, because you keep moving around and they don't have infinite speed if they're underground. So what will they do? Well, guess they'll have to find a way to do it somehow. They usually end up jumping at you from approximately the other side of the room that you're in. So it, usually it's not too hard for them to find a way to do it, but you never know. Hopefully I managed to create a fun and unpredictable experience for everyone. Little Pin, he might shoot explosive bullets at you, but he might hit himself. Skolex, he's got a big body, but only the butt is vulnerable. Mm. And Eternal Pin goes really crazy shooting bullets at you. Don't you just love that? Okay, so how do we make it so that he smoothly dives in and out of the ground? Well, one of the segments doesn't follow him around. One of the segments is the the hole that he makes in the ground. And it's just placed wherever he enters or leaves the ground. Now you might think I'm using some kind of mask to cover up where they interact with the ground so they get cut off at the right point. And I guess I almost do, except for the fact that it's just the ground segment covering up the other segments by being in front of them. So the, the worm is still there under the ground, you just can't see it because the, the ground pieces are in front of it. So if you have a thing that, that colors the enemy differently, like poison, then you can see that the ground is in fact also being affected by that poison. It's being recolored. So you can see how the ground segment looks. I don't think it does it when, uh, when he jumps out of the ground, but whenever he's popping his head out, you can see it. Well, that's what it would look like anyways if, they, if the worm dives forward. If he dives backward and he appears into the ground, the, the masking doesn't work quite as well. But it's still as good as you could expect. Now in 3D you could simply just make them clip into the ground and what, whatever part of them is underground would just be invisible. But in 2D I'd have to cut them off using a mask. I'd really like to make a 3D worm at some point. Some kind of 3D enemy that's a worm. I hope it's gonna work well. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe I'll do it in Squid Invaders, who knows. There's also this game called Snake Bus where you're a 3D snake. That's pretty cool. <laughs> 
Anyways, how about you people subscribe? I, I can't believe how many of you watch these videos, but that you're not subscribed. What the hell is going on? Press that subscribe button, plugs. Also, did you see my week of animations? I did like seven animations that all came out in the same week. And the last one had Simeon Jimmy in it. Well, what a great opportunity for you to watch that right now. Because it just came out like a week ago. <laughs> Simi and Jimmy and his best friends will try to do the impossible. Create a guide that will help you survive Trump's America. Week of animation. More like weak and out of control. <laughs>